Hey folks, uh, I'm going to give you a couple of pointers on how I assemble the uh, solder the connectors onto the board. So here's the board that I designed. has the 50 ohm transmission line, the high impedance section, and the two stubs. Again, you're going to have a radial stub here for yours. Uh, we have an input connector SMA here. We'll have an output connector, and then we're going to solder a connector on here that you're going to connect your DC supply to for the biasing. Um, one thing to note is that where the board shop uh, routes out the boards and then disconnect them. You'll have these little tabs that need to be sanded off and at the on some of the edges you'll see the dielectric actually uh, moving beyond the board which is normal. Again we, we accounted for like a 10 mil uh, um, protrusion of the dielectric. You're going to want to sand that such that the top trace is flush to the the bottom ground plane so that there's really no dielectric uh, material, the FR4, sticking out beyond that. So that's the first thing we're going to do is sand that kind of flush. And um, let me go ahead and do that. And I'll see if I can't pause the recording. Okay, I'm back. I uh, found some 220 grit uh, sandpaper and basically just kind of went back and forth like this to uh, make the edges really nice and smooth. All right, so that the, the ground plane is essentially flush with the top traces. Um, I would use a pretty fine sandpaper. The other thing you want to do then is I just have some isopropyl alcohol and I'm just cleaning off the traces, particularly the pads where I'm going to solder because you get all the finger greases and stuff off of there. Okay. Now there's two different uh, kind of connectors you'll run into. The ones from class are the ones that, that were for a thicker board. And let me see if I can demonstrate that. So let's see, this is the this is the one for 063 thick board. And as you can see, that uh, it's much thicker than, the gap is much wider than the board. This connector is designed for this board. You can see it fits on there nice and snugly. So it would go on just like this. And there's a nice gap there, very little gap. So it, it would solder on very nicely, but that's not the connector we have. We have this guy. So what we're, what we're going to do is it's going to get soldered onto this board. So there's these bottom tabs, as you can see in the center, these bottom tabs are not even going to be used. We're just going to use the top, but we do have to cut the tines off like I had mentioned. And I'm going to forward or include the little uh, Word document or PDF that I did that outlines this procedure. So the first thing you're going to do is cut the tines off to the length of the pads. So what I'm doing here is just going to mark off kind of how long, how much to cut off of the pads. And then I want to cut off a substantial portion of the center conductor because we're really not going to need that. So I'm going to use a pair of tin snips and cut that off. Let me pause the video and see if I can go off and do that. Okay, I'm back. Um, I should say it kind of goes without saying that you need to use proper uh, safety equipment when doing this. Like for instance, for goodness sakes, wear safety goggles. Because if you cut these little tines off, the little pieces fly everywhere. So just use a pair of tin snips and I have this little file. You can get these pretty cheap at Harbor Freight if you don't have them. But So I just cut this flushed like I have in the document and I cut the center conductor off uh, substantially. So now when we go ahead and put this together, uh, it's going to fit nicely onto the board. So there's the top down view. So I get us in focus a bit. So that's the top down view. And then there's the side view. You can see that there's going to be a gap. Maybe I can move the, uh, mic the microscope up. Okay, see that? All right, so here's my uh, suggestion to soldering the connectors on. So what I do is I have a little little piece of metal here. And uh, I'm going to turn on the soldering iron. Um, and this thing just basically uh, props the board up. It's a quarter inch piece of metal. You can use a quarter inch piece of anything, really. And you're going to solder the center conductor on first. Now, what, what I'm doing here is I'm placing the, the connector on, so you can see that. Okay, you're going to center that. Let me adjust the, uh, the uh, microscope. So first thing you're going to do is we're going to put a blob of solder and we're going to solder the center conductor and that's going to hold it together. And then we're going to solder these two edges right here. So let me, um, let's go ahead and solder 
the little blob of, sot, uh, of the trace first. Uh, a little Weller soldering iron. Um, let's see if I can do this. I'll put a little bit of solder here on the edge. That's what you need to do. Okay, and then I'm going to go over here and put the connector on. It's a little tough to do, and we'll see what I'm doing first. Okay. All right. So I've got everything positioned. I'm holding the board down. It's lifted up, and so let's go ahead and reflow the center conductor down. So it's so it's got a nice little fillet. I've reflowed the solder and I'm pushing the connector toward the board and I'm pushing it down and it's centered just like that okay so let's just see if we can zoom in and take a look or zoom out I'm not sure whichever so now the center conductor is soldered and it is flush to the board do you see that okay and see how these guys these bottom tines are just dangling here they're, that's what they're going to do we're not going to worry about them but now we're, the center conductor is holding the board on there. So next what we're going to do is, and I have my soldering iron. This is a SN63 um, standard uh, tin, 6337 tin lead solder. And I set my soldering iron on 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Your mileage may vary. So now what I'm going to do is just try to solder these two tines on here. Um, so we're running a little bead of solder here. Now again, when, you know, I, I'm pretty sure that everyone's had experience soldering. Um, when you solder these connectors, now notice the center conductor soldered right away. There's not a lot of thermal mass to the center conductor. But this guy, you got to you got to get this whole thing pretty hot. And so there's a danger in you guys, or be very cautious that you don't burn yourself because this connector is going to get really hot. And uh, so what I'm going to try to do is run a bead of solder underneath there and get a nice fillet. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> I chose a metal piece of quarter inch thing that's going to pull the heat away. Probably not a great idea, but I think it should be fine for now. And by soldering these little legs, what we're doing is we're not only mechanically holding the connector, but it's also making an electrical connection to the ground pads. And remember our ground pads have two vias that go from the trop trace to the bottom. So this is another way that the connector is grounded. So now you can see when the whole thing is pretty well warm, it's going to accept a nice solder uh, joint right there. It's reflowing very nicely. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and use uh, some of the, normally you would wait so the thing cools off to do what I'm doing to clean it with the isopropyl but I got these little um, q-tips and I'm just trying to clean up the the flux that comes off of this a little bit all right we can do a little bit more but I'm doing this mostly so I can show you the solder joint so not pretty but it will work let me see if I can get this get a little more light on here yeah not pretty at all but uh, you get the idea that the two tines are soldered to the ground pads and the center conductor is soldered you can see a little gap there but not too bad and the two and the traces I mean the tines on the very bottom are just dangling there so the other thing I would recommend is next now you can really see the gap so ideally you would want to um, sand more dielectric and try to get this gap to be zero you want the thing to be flush to the ground plane I think for our purposes it probably doesn't matter too much but um, again best practice if you're trying to get really good now what we're going to do I'd recommend and this would work as it is but I would recommend putting a small solder fillet right against the edge here and again my soldering iron is set for very fine um, work you know, I do uh, 0603 uh, SMT components Normally, if I'm doing connectors, I have it, my next soldering iron, which is over to the left, um, is a little bit higher wattage, and it's got a bigger tip, and so it's going to solder things much nicer. So it's going to take a while for this to heat up. 
but I'm trying to set a, a, a bit of a solder underneath. You don't have to plow a lot of solder, but um, and it's going to take a while to heat up, but I think it's kind of going there. Let's see if we can get some stuff going here. Can you see that? I'm going to try to center it a little bit more. More surface area will help heat it up, and it's going to it's going to form a bit of a, a fillet. Now there's a bit of a gap that you don't really have to worry about shorting the thing out. But now, there we go. That looks nice. Okay, about it. And now you can see that I have a solder fillet between the ground plane and the body, and that will help fill in that gap. And what's that do? What's that going to do? It's going to reduce the inductance. Uh, of the transition and make it a better impedance match. Okay, so we clean it up, and again, that sucker is hot, so be careful. Um, if you solder things for class before, you probably didn't have this. You didn't have to solder these big connectors on. So once again, safety, safety first. Make sure you don't burn yourself, um, and uh, it will get hot. And let me just kind of clean this up a little bit, and you can see the final product. So there it is. Um, Center conductor, not pretty, but it's soldered to the trace, and there's the little fillet. And so that's what I'm going to ask you to do. You're going to put one here. I'm going to go ahead and solder this connector on this side, but again, it's this one's made for it, so it'll be a little bit easier. And you'll solder also a connector here to hook up the DC power supply. Now, when we go to test this, we are going to um, hook up a network vector network analyzer. We're going to put port one here port 2 put a signal through here and we're essentially going to terminate this with different loads. One load would just be an open circuit. Another one could be like a 50 ohm load. Maybe we can find some other resistor loads and essentially if we did this right kind of no matter what we uh, uh, attach here, either a 1 to 100 ohm resistor should have very little effect to the transmission properties going from this port to this port because this bias T is isolating the um, the DC component are from this from the SG1. So that's about it. That's all I wanted to show you and uh, good luck and we'll talk to you later.